everyone and welcome to our DC Zone. I'm Danny Zonsparalako. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has appointed the following three ministers. Accordingly, Gitaon Mokria has taken the post of Minister of Education, while Malakwa Lebel will assume the post of Minister of Trade and Industry. Also, Abraham Balai has been appointed Minister of Innovation and Technology. Their appointment has been effective since January 15, 2020, according to the Office of the Prime Minister. Ethiopia's parliament deliberates on a draft bill on the settlement of disputes and conflicts between state governments. The bill is also hoped to create harmony between and among federal and state governments on issues of common goals. Sentai Kamrat brings us up to speed. Ethiopia is one of the countries that exercise federal state structure. Despite dividends, the federal form of government over the past two decades has witnessed several pitfalls. A legal framework has always been necessary to address some of these problems, particularly issues related to the relationship between the state and the federal governments and among the state governments themselves. The Legal Justice and Democracy Affairs Standing Committee of the Parliament put the draft bill on the table for various stakes. And then, Sometimes the relation among state governments may not be healthy. Power overlap among the federal and state governments may lead to conflicts. So it is necessary to develop this legal framework to overcome these issues. The law is found to be a key tool to resolve the disagreements around the table. Also, this time around, the relations between the federal government and its constituency is getting loose. This will be a threat to the federal system. Thus, it is necessary to have a system that helps manage the relation. Some participants have shown concerns of maintaining the constitution within the new law. What sort of directions and decisions will the draft bill give to the states? Is that in harmony with the constitution? The federal government No part of this law violates the duties and responsibilities of the federal government, stated in Articles 51 and 55 of the constitution and that of the states on Article 52 of Constitution. The process of drafting this law began back in 2013. Taking the feedbacks from the consultation, this draft bill will be referred to the Parliament for endorsement. The European Union is assessing conditions for deployment of an election observation mission to the next general election of Ethiopia. During the discussion with members of the parliament, EU policy officer for Ethiopia said the observer mission will prioritize assessing the condition in Ethiopia before any decision for deployment of observers. Members of the team are spending more than two weeks in Addis Ababa and some regions to assess the situation. The European team held talks with House Deputy Speaker Shetai Manala and members of the parliament. She told the team that the House is interested to allow the European Union as observer of the upcoming election. According to the Deputy Speaker, the House is also committed to facilitating a historic election.
Welcome back. You're still watching our Disney News Hour. Ethiopians and Kenyans form association of friends, officially announced last week when the former mayor of Nairobi and superintendent of the association, Professor Nathan Kahara, handed over the legal documents that confirm the formation of the association to the Ethiopian ambassador to Kenya, Mala Salab. The association works to foster a friendship between the two countries and promote peace and education, as well as trade links among people in the border regions. Commending the first ever friendship association created between Ethiopians and Kenyans, Ambassador Malis expressed his hope that the association would expand the number and composition of its members. Now, the Human Resource Development and Technology Standing Affairs with the House of People's Representatives urges all members of the public to play their role in bringing about a peaceful teaching learning processes in higher education institutions. This came when the Ministry of Science and Higher Education held a consultative meeting with MPs and other stakeholders in connection with reform programs being undertaken in science and higher education sectors. Goshu Maliso has the full account as follows. The Ministry of Science and Higher Education has held discussions with the Human Resource Development Affairs Standing Committee of the Parliament and other stakeholders on reforms in the higher education sector. It was disclosed that a new education training roadmap, 10 years master plan of higher education sector and ingredients have been taken from the discussion. Universities should be restructured in vision and excellence. We have taken important recommendations from the discussion, which we are very glad and committed to apply. <laughs> the ministry envisions application of resources and scientific remedies. Scientific remedies and knowledge will help ensure Ethiopia's prosperity. We have set the 10-year plan already. I hope this plan will help ensuring transformation. The task of organizing universities with mission, excellence, and improving the bottlenecks are underway, Afork added. We are going to categorize universities into research, applied, and comprehensive types. All these universities can be centers for excellence based on their infrastructure, resource, and wealth they have. For example, the Bahadar and Kotab universities are more known for teachers' education excellence because they were working on that field for quite long. We are striving to mobilize additional resources for internal excellence. In the sidelines of the discussion, the Adama Science and Technology University was visited. What we saw here remains an important experience, such as the electronic card for students. I think this should be replicated by other universities to sustain the peaceful teaching learning process. The government has recently disclosed that 20 students held as hostages in Dambidolo have been released, although their families haven't yet confirmed the release. Over 35,000 students have been forced to leave campuses this academic year for fear of their safety after several universities became targets of violence.